Star clusters are very large groups of stars. Two types of star clusters can be distinguished. Globular clusters are tight groups of hundreds to millions of old stars which are gravitationally bound, while open clusters, more loosely clustered groups of stars, generally contain fewer than a few hundred members, and are often very young. Open clusters become disrupted over time by the gravitational influence of giant molecular clouds as they move through the galaxy, but cluster members will continue to move in broadly the same direction through space even though they are no longer gravitationally bound, they are then known as a stellar association, sometimes also referred to as a moving group. Star clusters visible to the naked eye include the Pleiades M45, Hyades, and the Beehive Cluster M44. Topic. Globular cluster Globular clusters are roughly spherical groupings of from 10,000 to several million stars packed into regions of from 10 to 30 light years across. They commonly consist of very old population two stars—just a few hundred million years younger than the universe itself—which are mostly yellow and red, with masses less than two solar masses. Such stars predominate within clusters because hotter and more massive stars have exploded as supernovae, or evolved through planetary nebula phases to end as white dwarfs. Yet a few rare blue stars exist in globulars, thought to be formed by stellar mergers in their dense inner regions, these stars are known as blue stragglers. In our galaxy, globular clusters are distributed roughly spherically in the galactic halo, around the galactic center, orbiting the center in highly elliptical orbits. In 1917, the astronomer Harlow Shapley made the first reliable estimate the Sun's distance from the galactic center based on the distribution of globular clusters. Until the mid-1990s, globular clusters were the cause of a great mystery in astronomy, as theories of stellar evolution gave ages for the oldest members of globular clusters that were greater than the estimated age of the universe. However, greatly improved distance measurements to globular clusters using the Hipparchos satellite and increasingly accurate measurements of the Hubble constant resolved the paradox, giving an age for the universe of about 13 billion years and an age for the oldest stars of a few hundred million years less. Our galaxy has about 150 globular clusters, some of which may have been captured from small galaxies disrupted by the Milky Way, as seems to be the case for the globular cluster M79. Some galaxies are much richer in globulars, the giant elliptical galaxy M87 contains over a thousand. A few of the brightest globular clusters are visible to the naked eye, with the brightest, Omega Centauri, having been known since antiquity and catalogued as a star before the telescopic age. The brightest globular cluster in the Northern Hemisphere is Messier 13 in the constellation of Hercules. Super star cluster Super star clusters are very large regions of recent star formation, and are thought to be the precursors of globular clusters. Examples include Westland 1 in the Milky Way. <laughs> Open clusters Open clusters are very different from globular clusters. Unlike the spherically distributed globulars, they are confined to the galactic plane, and are almost always found within spiral arms. They are generally young objects, up to a few tens of millions of years old, with a few rare exceptions as old as a few billion years, such as Messier 67 the closest and most observed old open cluster, for example. They form from H2 regions such as the Orion Nebula. Open clusters usually contain up to a few hundred members, within a region up to about 30 light years across. Being much less densely populated than globular clusters, they are much less tightly gravitationally bound, and over time, are disrupted by the gravity of giant molecular clouds and other clusters. Close encounters between cluster members can also result in the ejection of stars, a process known as evaporation. The most prominent open clusters are the Pleiades and Hyades in Taurus. The double cluster of H plus Chi per se can also be prominent under dark skies. Open clusters are often dominated by hot young blue stars, because although such stars are short-lived in stellar terms, only lasting a few tens of millions of years, open clusters tend to have dispersed before these stars die. 
Establishing precise distances to open clusters enables the calibration of the period luminosity relationship shown by Cepheid's variable stars, which are then used as standard candles. Cepheids are luminous and can be used to establish both the distances to remote galaxies and the expansion rate of the universe Hubble constant. Indeed, the open cluster NGC 7790 hosts three classical Cepheids which are critical for such efforts. Embedded clusters Embedded clusters are groups of very young stars that are partially or fully encased in an interstellar dust or gas which is often impervious to optical observations. Embedded clusters form in molecular clouds, when the clouds begin to collapse and form stars. There is often ongoing star formation in these clusters, so embedded clusters may be home to various types of young stellar objects including protostars and pre-main sequence stars. An example of an embedded cluster is the trapezium cluster in the Orion Nebula. In Rho Ophiuchi Cloud L1688 core region there is an embedded cluster, the embedded cluster phase may last for several million years, after which gas in the cloud is depleted by star formation or dispersed through radiation pressure, stellar winds and outflows, or supernova explosions. In general less than 30% of cloud mass is converted to stars before the cloud is dispersed, but this fraction may be higher in particularly dense parts of the cloud. With the loss of mass in the cloud, the energy of the system is altered, often leading to the disruption of a star cluster. Most young embedded clusters disperse shortly after the end of star formation. The open clusters found in the galaxy are former embedded clusters that were able to survive early cluster evolution. However, nearly all freely floating stars, including the Sun, were originally born into embedded clusters that disintegrated. Topic: Intermediate forms. In 2005, astronomers discovered a new type of star cluster in the Andromeda Galaxy, which is, in several ways, very similar to globular clusters, although less dense. No such clusters, which also known as extended globular clusters, are known in the Milky Way. The three discovered in Andromeda Galaxy are M31WFSC1, M31WFSC2, and M31WFSC3. These new found star clusters contain hundreds of thousands of stars, a similar number to globular clusters. The clusters also share other characteristics with globular clusters, e.g., the stellar populations and metallicity. What distinguishes them from the globular clusters is that they are much larger, several hundred light years across, and hundreds of times less dense. The distances between the stars are thus much greater. The clusters have properties intermediate between globular clusters and dwarf spheroidal galaxies. How these clusters are formed is not yet known, but their formation might well be related to that of globular clusters. YM31 has such clusters, while the Milky Way has not, is not yet known. It is also unknown if any other galaxy contains this kind of clusters, but it would be very unlikely that M31 is the sole galaxy with extended clusters. Another type of cluster are faint fuzzies, which so far have only been found in lenticular galaxies like NGC 1023 and NGC 3384. They are characterized by their large size compared to globular clusters and a ring like distribution around the centers of their host galaxies. As the latter they seem to be old objects. <inaudible> Astronomical significance of star clusters Stellar clusters are important in many areas of astronomy. Because the stars were all born at roughly the same time, the different properties of all the stars in a cluster are a function only of mass, and so stellar evolution theories rely on observations of open and globular clusters. Clusters are also a crucial step in determining the distance scale of the universe. A few of the nearest clusters are close enough for their distances to be measured using parallax. A Hertzsprung-Russell diagram can be plotted for these clusters which has absolute values known on the luminosity axis. Then, when similar diagram is plotted for a cluster whose distance is not known, the position of the main sequence can be compared to that of the first cluster and the distance estimated. This process is known as main sequence fitting. Reddening and stellar populations must be accounted for when using this method. 
Nearly all stars in the galactic field, including the Sun, were initially born in regions with embedded clusters that disintegrated. This means that properties of stars and planetary systems may have been affected by early clustered environments. This appears to be the case for our own solar system, in which chemical abundances point to the effects of a supernova from a nearby star early in our solar system's history. Nomenclature In 1979, the International Astronomical Union's 17th General Assembly recommended that newly discovered star clusters, open or globular, within the galaxy have designations following the convention, CHHMM plus or minus DDD, always beginning with the prefix C, where H, M, and D represent the approximate coordinates of the cluster center in hours and minutes of right ascension, and degrees of declination, respectively, with leading zeros. The designation, once assigned, is not to change, even if subsequent measurements improve on the location of the cluster center. The first of such designations were assigned by Gostelinger in 1982. See also Hypercompact stellar system Open cluster and globular cluster Protostar Robust associations of massive baryonic objects Rambos. Notes <laughs>